Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to show you how to fix your Keurig K Supreme Plus, model number K920. Okay, so I've got my K Supreme Plus here. I've got it plugged in and it's just dead. I turn, I, not, the power won't come on, none of the lights light up. It just acts like the, the unit's dead. So this could have happened during a descale or it could have happened if you ran your tank empty and you did a brood and you didn't know the, the add water light did not come on. So I'm going to show you how to disassemble the Keurig and we're going to reset a thermostat. You're going to need a, a number two Phillips, a straight slot and a really, really small straight slot to kind of pry open the side and a pair of needle nose. You don't need a multimeter. So the, one, the last thing you'll need is a, is a metal paper clip. So you're going to use this to, to reset the thermostat. Okay, so I've got a video on the Keurig K Supreme. This, is, this was the K Supreme before the Plus. And I show people how to open it up and reset the thermostat. Well, this Plus has the exact same thermostat and heating element in there. Okay, so we want to make sure the machine, when we open this up for this entire process, we're going to make sure it's unplugged because there's electricity back here and it could give us a shock. So in here is the heating element. And right on top of the heating element, you'll see there's the, the thermostat right there. And in the center of it, there's a spot where you can put a paper clip and reset it. So here I've got that heating element out of another Keurig. There's the thermostat, and you're going to put the, you'll put the paper clip right there in the middle, and you'll just push. You'll just push on it, and you'll hear just, maybe you might hear a little click, you may not, and that'll reset it. Now what happens is, is if this heating element runs dry, or if it overheats, then it opens up this thermostat, and then you can reset it. Okay, so first thing, we're going to unplug it. I got the drip tray out, you're going to take the water tank off. We're gonna flip it on the bottom. We need to take out these, these two plugs right here. There's three Phillips screws that we gotta to get to. Right here. They're not really long, but they're kind of down in there away. So this one, this one, and then right here there's one. We're gonna take all three of those out. Okay, so I like to put the three screws and the two things in the drip tray. Okay, I'll kind of demonstrate to you. First, we gotta take this little top cap off first. And then we're going to take out this, this plastic piece, we'll pull straight up. And then this metal piece is all one big piece that wraps around it and we'll kind of have to uh, unattach it and move it, from, move it towards the front with the handle up. So getting a screwdriver right in here can be a little tricky, but once you get one in there like this, then get your bigger screwdriver and you're going to have to pop those off. Now I broke two already when I popped it off but you should have to just pop those off. There, then the, there's the piece that comes off. It's okay if you break a few of them, it'll go back together and hold together pretty good. Next, this plastic piece is gonna pull straight up. We just gotta grab it and kind of disconnect it. It kind of pulls straight up. There's these little ears on both sides that we gotta lift up and then it'll come straight out like that. Okay, so this next part can be a little challenging it really helps. You're going to have to lift this up, and this should stay up for most of it. Now, the, you're already seeing that it's starting to become loose. Now, there, there's two tangs up here that break really easy. Now, we're going to, it, the theory is to kind of slide this forward to disconnect those tabs right there. They don't lift straight up or nothing. But first, let's kind of, let's break it loose right here. And it might be easier, kind of like there's a little spot right here. And you can lift this up and you're going to disconnect there's these these tabs right here they just they just disconnect straight up right here there's three of them there's three of them here and there's three of them here okay so i've got the other side popped loose okay so we've got these loose like this we can see it's all it's starting to get loose but it's going to be it's going to be really attached right here and again, when this is all loose, we want to pull it forward a little bit. So this is probably the trickiest part and you can get a screwdriver right in here, but don't pry this way. Just kind of, you want to get it loose. And then again, you'll, you'll see this pulls forward. There, now you can see everything's pretty well disconnected. Now it's just a matter of, of kind of unwrapping it off of the machine. Okay, there's the assembly. You just gotta unwrap it. There was those tangs in here that are kind of tricky. Okay, so now right here on this left side, there's that thermostat right there. So if you don't have a meter, you can just press, take your paper clip, 
and go right in there to that center of that and just kind of press it. You might hear a little it reset or you may not. So this next part, I like to verify that mine's opened up. So I like to put a, one part of the meter on this right hand part of the plug. I've got my multimeter set to ohms. And when I make con contact, it'll show how much uh, ohms it is. When it's open like that, that means there's no, um, it's open line or op overload. There's no continuity. So we come down here to the left side of that thermostat. You'll have, you'll have continuity. Okay, I've got continuity. And then when I go to the right side of it, it's open. Now let me take this paper clip and I'll reset it. And again, you just press it right in the middle. Okay, I heard maybe just a little bit of a click. And now when I go to the right side, I've got continuity. So now my thermostat is reset. Okay, so I plugged mine in. I don't recommend you plugging yours in. I'm going to verify that I fixed it. Okay, so now mine powers up. Again, don't plug yours in because there is electricity on it, but I'm going to do a brew. Now you may get a bunch of steam that comes out of yours because there may be air in the lines. Okay, so I did have some steam that came out of some tubes up here at the top, which is, is normal, and now it's working. So if your, if your water pump right here on the left, if it's bad, that will cause that thermostat to open back up again. And you'll need to replace that, that water pump. I don't have a part number for that water pump. I've not seen a place where you can buy just the water pump. And again, make sure you've got water in your tank when you turn it on and start it. You don't want to ever run your water tank dry. Okay, so I've got it unplugged again. Mine's fixed. But I want to explain what I think is happening, why this that thermostat is opening up. So again, if you've got a bad water pump, it's just going to open up every time. And your machine is going to need to be replaced. But what also can happen is, is if your low water light, if your add water light on your screen never comes on, you could accidentally run the machine dry. And if you get air in those lines, that's going to cause that heating element to, to heat up really quick. And it's going to open up that thermostat. So I'll show you, so the, the, where the water tank sits, you've got this, and there's two lines that come out of it. One goes to the water pump, and the other one goes to uh, a low water sensor. So I've taken a Supreme apart, and if you follow these lines, there's that box right there. I've got the box out of another machine. So at the bottom of the box, one side's for the water pump, so it pumps the, it takes the water to the water pump, and it goes to your K-cup. The other side is for your add water sensor. That's what these two lines are for, these two wires. Okay, so I'll try to explain. So when you put the water tank on, the water rises in those lines because the other end of this box for the water sensor goes to a vent. So there's nothing really to stop the water. So you can watch as the water drops in the tank, it also drops in this box accordingly. And when it gets below these two lines right here is when your add water light comes on. So deep down inside there, you'll see there's that box. And if you follow that top line, it goes to a vent. You want to make sure this vent is nice and open. If this vent uh, gets plugged up, it's not going to let that water go up and down inside that box and your add water light won't come on. So the, the next reason I think the light might come on is during descale. So descale process is kind of a long process and you're really using this machine a lot. First, you got to run the descaling solution through and you're pressing a brew button, uh, the brew button a bunch of times. And then after that, you've got to run a fresh water rinse cycle and you've got to run a bunch of water through it by pressing the brew. So that's a bunch of brews going through here. And what can happen is I think is it overheats this thermostat, it pops and then your machine's dead. Now I've had some other viewers leave comments that say, you should wait 30 minutes between the, de between the descaling solution or vinegar and the fresh water rinses. Now, the only problem with that, you've got to make sure the machine stays in descale mode. As we know, in order to get the descale light to go out, you have to put the machine into a descale mode. You have to run the descale solution through it. The add water light has to come on in order for the logic to go to the fresh water rinse. Then you've got to do the fresh water rinse cycle. Then the descale light will go out. So, Two things, the add water light doesn't come on during the descale, that could be a problem, and you run the tank dry and it gets air in there and pops it, or it's just too much for the heating element to run all that through there and then immediately do the fresh water rinse. Okay, so now we're ready to put it back together. Now, thankfully, putting it back together is a lot easier than taking it apart. 
and that might be because a few of the, the pins are, are broken. But we're gonna start, we're gonna lift this up. Again, make sure it's unplugged. And you're gonna start from the front. Okay, so wrap it around the machine and then we wanna get those first pins right there. We wanna engage those pins. Okay, so once you get those front pins lined up, then it goes pretty easy. Then you're gonna just snap these sides together. Okay, so then I just kinda give it a little snap like that. Okay, so you snap those back in, that's what it looks like. Okay, so once those are snapped in, you can see everything's starting to line up. We've gotta put our screws back in the bottom. But before we do that, we're gonna slide this in. This is pretty easy. Just make sure the ears are lined up. Those two tangs go at the bottom. You might have to open it up to get the ears back in. Make sure you don't pinch one of those wires down there. It's very simple, very easy to do. So again, then you're just gonna push, push that down and it locks everything into place along the sides. Okay, so now you take this top part and you just gotta snap it back, snap it back on. And now don't forget to put your three screws in and then put those little rubber feet in. I hope the video helps. I also took apart a Keurig K-Supreme Plus smart coffee maker. So the new smart coffee maker that's got a big screen up here and connects to Wi-Fi, it comes apart exactly the same as this. And it's got that exact same heating element on the inside and it will uh, pop sometimes too and it will need reset. So all three Keurig K-Supremes have the exact same thermostat and heating element in them. It's just the original K-Supreme had a plastic cover and it comes apart a little bit different. I've got a separate video on how to do the K-Supreme, K-Supreme Plus, and the K-Supreme Plus Smart. If there's anything else that's broke on this coffee maker, leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to help you fix it. Thanks everybody for watching.